I'm traveling north in Nigeria toward the city of Oshogbo and the annual pilgrimage held every August in honor of the river goddess, Oshun. We're arriving in Oshogbo, which is the final destination of this journey. But I gotta be honest, I was expecting the small town. It turns out it's the sprawling megalopolis, millions of people. Still, nothing is built high here. Everything is built flat. Nothing is taller than four stories. There are all these vendors are swarming around the car. They've got plantain chips, they've got palm oil. You see these stacks of yams by the side of the road. These guys are, um, I, think, are you, I think they're just looking for money. We've got some people selling peanuts. You've got uh, uh, carving knives. What is this mouse glue? Oh, I saw it's a mouse trap. Part of what they're doing is they're just bringing the market to you. So instead of having to get out of your car and go buy something, they're going to bring all the goods to you, and you can buy it while you're sitting in traffic and waiting to go on your way. This town is growing so fast. There's construction everywhere. New roads, new neighborhoods are popping up all the time. Even the locals can't keep up. So this creative solution has emerged. There are these guys on little motorcycles. You stop, tell them where you're going, then they scoot off into the traffic and you try to keep up with them. The locals call these guys their GPS. Around here somewhere is this dense pocket of traditional African rainforest. It's really the epicenter of the festival. Yet it seems alien from what's around me, and to be honest, we're having trouble finding it. We're trying to make our way there now. Maybe we need that Nigerian GPS after all. Notes from the Field was made possible by the Pew Charitable Trusts. Funding for the series Sacred Journeys with Bruce Feiler was provided by But who made the corner? Who made the corner? 
Mazu. Ah, dah lah. Go follow them now.
Shabbatis.
Oshungu, popularly called Iluaru, is known for the annual Oshun Oshobo Festival, which holds every August. Totty <laughs> That's <laughs> On a dijuko, Ronat, a bayo, Tobatin, Fing Badura, Tomo, or a young man, Joe, at the banner. Ah, pass a the uniqueness of Oshun Oshobu festival is usually revealed in the life and times of a virgin girl called Aruba. Aruba is a Yoruba word for a votary maid whose sole responsibility is to serve the river goddess until she decides to quit. Asawa, you can't do what balaga, Olu Maruba. What do you pay? What do you want to do? Kiera, Ara, Koto Malu. So, I did this often. I want Oba. I want my lady. I want Yari. Why did you buy your son? I buy no one so back. I love. But if I mock a wow, I do see more call wow. I lay she to two. So, you can wash it. I want See, Leo call. I want to move and look me. Did you tell me? Mobile Lati, ninety eight one. More rude, ninety nine eight one. More rude, ninety ninety two. Aransi mato mi keta adupe lo won ki run won le ko ba wa mu ko ba wa foriji won 
So ko ma so ti ri poka ko ti fe mo mu omo sa. On wa fori kori pelu awon ilu pelu awon yo sun. Ka le ba mo ri awon omo yi o. Bi won se ene ka we pipo. Ka won lo mo ko ni imo nipa iwe. So di a se pe re si lo si school ni. Bo se pe won fa lanpa ni lati ka pipo. Ni won ba ta se ka na adupe lowo sun so gbo. Iya toto wa nbe oju pe omo ta ye bi ilaye npa. Ibatia ototo ni ko si wa la pe e ma gbo phone e ma gbe kan e ma gbe ko si nbe e me lo sodo ni ti won fo so ti re kan aya ato to mo ti wa gbe mi rogo ya mi to to wa le de lo fo so yoku lo wa ko wa mi ngo wo le mo aruru na ni a ti gbe lo se ni idu si ko se du ngo se pe sa baba mi ni Baba call the money. Baba, me loan me me. Me na money, Baba. Me le wa na wa ti wa mu me. Ngba ti oni ki wa ru ba. Ama Baba, me lo yo nda pe ki wa wa mu me. Ti mo fi wa ru ba. Fosu aya dele na mo ru ba te ni na. Mo si nka kan ti mo fe se si. Mo lo le mo lo school mo si lo le ke hotel. Ba mo de di osun ni won lo school ma. Ile ke un go. E lo mo ngba ti mo ti de di osun. Ne ba ti le di osun ko ibi bai la nsun awe lo le ani le kan ta mo lo oko mi to fe mi ona se san ko ona to gba fi ri mi se nu ama du osun mu temi oto gbo ta odun si bi ta wa ba ona se mo lo so ko ni an to ko eyin bo bayi ni ile number n ba nbo number wa de ni ndan da ji jo na ndan da ji kutun ni ti ma tan ba se ri number nu ya ba ni se eyin ri e kale se eyin ri e kale o ta won lo le eni mama mi ni ni lo le bo ni ko lo em sa ma lo tin ya ba lo lo mi mara won lowo ni ba so ko wani lo di osun lo emi ni gba kan e na mi o do mo so ko gan ni e mo so ko lopo lopo sugba ngba ti mo de a yin tan e lo do do na lo tun po e ko ngba ta ri ori ni se nkan la da ki won se fun a sugba laye gba ti a awon omo ki won to ma nsuku won to ma ni suku won yin se nkan kan aye dudu ngba na ngba gbogbo ti awon yin o tabi ta won omo wa ngba awon baba wa ti oji kejide eni malede loju bi pe ni gba awon omo wa ti won ba ti ngba de won tun lo suku ni ka lu ku won ba fun si dada won na si se dada won to lo ni ki won si fun a lo si ni ko da fun a o se wa ni o se pe nkan dile baba wa ni a gbodo pa se o di dandan baba lo lo mo iya mi ti wi wi to ti baba lo se se mo mi wa na no la ban ba aye lo ngba se de yin eno do gbogbo kin ni la ti a ba bere ko nfun wa gbogbo won to wa nsuku da le le me gbe won bi osun meji ti won fi pe ni won o mu mi wa yo wa ngba na ba to la la ti pe le oro fe ja re ni baba mi agbaba ni ki won sare mu mi wa mo pa fi wa bi mo se de doke di re mu de le oja ni ibi lo mo gbe mu da mo se wa le mo gbe bi ibi to mo gbe ni o san wa baba to gba ba mi san wa adele na o won se en to kun a a ka gbe o amo ba to ni ibi ni e ma wa gbe Ah, ke lo le as verse bi la so. Eh, ti won pe ndi onmo ni won wa gbe ni. Ngba o te ni arugba ni, o ti di dandan. Awon la to sa wa gbe mi, o se pe bi na ni wa so, a ni yara. Ṣugbọn ni gba se e mo nkan ti arugba je ki won to wa so fun ni pe. Ebi o se ri gba na, ni o gbe lese. Gba ti won ke si mi. gbo bata ni ti mo ri lasiko gba na igba ta mo ta wa ni ni e te pe ma ni tori ntu wi ani 
Pour moi, c'était bien à Bakamouna. Je suis un Traditionally, the votary maid Aruba must be a spinster from the king's extended family and must be chosen for the role by Ifa definition. That's After thorough consultation with Ifa deity is concluded, the chosen Aruba becomes the personification of the goddess Oshun. Her spiritual orientation begins in earnest 
at the Oshun Temple under the watchful eyes of Iyaoshun and some Oshun devotees. Thus, throughout this period, her public life activities are restricted and certain self-satisfying acts are also denied due to her newly acquired personality. To this effect, her life now becomes a dictate of the gods and that of the people of Oshobo. <laughs> The present Aruba Oshun, Oshun Tomi Oyetunji, still basking in the euphoria of her new life, wasn't very keen to speak about her new role. Sometimes Oshuntomi stares ceaselessly without uttering a word. Without the Aruba, there can be no festival. Therefore, Oshun Oshobo festival is never complete without the ritual procession that leads to the river Oshun. Announcement. Nothing <laughs> Ribe. So, 
iwo ro okunrin iwo ro obirin otola wo ro awo ro ni gba keji yo osun tori pe osun ta wa joko ti yi obirin ni obirin lo ma nawo si awo ro je partner gbe yin alako we se ma nso pe gba keji ise okunrin wa ise obirin wa ni di osun so be ni ti wo ma ti saju ba yen arugba lo gboro si waju to ba si waju ilu oba atele pelu gbogbo idoye awon ilu osogbo ati gbogbo agbaye lapapo so lati mo se awon iwure so arugba lo ma gbe igba yen lo si odo to ba ti di arugba lo gboro saju oba de odo be bo se wa ni igba wa se na niyan pe osun lo ma si waju de odo ki oba to tele sibe tori osun gangan lo ni ilu yi osun lo je ka mo wi pe oso inu gbo o ni an pe ni oso gbo osun lo je ka mo wi pe oso gbo yi o oso inu gbo ni na an pe lo so gbo so osun lo ba ti wa si waju obo wa tele won gbogbo ilu lapapo won wa mo jo won mo jo won won mo je won mo se gbogbe so isi agba ni Ibani le moze balata Moze balata mi pate vela la biara Eyo mo lu pa dadi di kwa ara la we Na na la we o Adi kwa na la we o Mo te kuta oro The Aruba led by the most senior priestess and Auro Ashun must carry the ritual calabash on her head before noon from the premises of the palace of the reigning Ataoja of Ashubu, guided on both sides by a formidable human fence, which must ensure she gets to her destination without any incident. Most importantly, the calabash. Females, they are more spiritual. They believe more and they trust more, and they are more religious than men. All over the world. I've traveled a lot. I've seen this. I've never seen a country where we see men better than women in spiritual and religious lives. No. No, I've never seen it. Women are very, very emotional. And, and religion and spiritual is highly emotional thing. Highly emotional thing. You see, you will see it on that day. You will see. We ourselves, you will see the way we are. We, I will not be like this. You cannot talk to me on that day. Those of us who have entered, all of, I mean those of us who will carry us to the river. Also we have changed us. We are mad then. Aruba is also mad. All of us are mad. On the move. You see? You will see. You will see. We will start our own craziness. Yesterday, the day before. We are the craziness who follow us till we come back in the second day. If then if then we will come back the second day, we put us down, we put our head down, we pray, we thank us for making us to go and come back where without problem, everything where went where. Aruba fine, we fine, and the people who came from all over the world, they are okay. We didn't hear that somebody died or whatever. We thank us for that. We put all the rituals together, then that's why we, we become like you again. <laughs> one year studying Yoruba religion. I, before to discover Yoruba religion, I did, did not have other religion. When I was small, I was Catholic, but no more, I did, did not like a Catholic religion. 
When I discovered Yoruba religion, I like it too much because he's very, very spiritual. All is um, about the nature. And it's like to discover our, our beginning. And I like too much. I have learned how to be bet better person than before and in to believe in other things that are not here in the earth. The concept that I have about Oshun is the god godness of love, of like to care, like that she cared the women, uh, even the, the children, women, and also she helped us uh, if we have problems for to get pregnant, they ca she can help us. I want to learn, 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 and I want to be priestess. I want to have many knowledge about the religion for to help other people, because there are many people like lost, and they can't uh, find the correct way in, in their lives, and I want to help them. Devotion to the goddess of the river Oshun by an Aruba is total. That is why any virgin girl chosen as Aruba must be catered for by both the Atalja's palace, Oshun Temple, and the entire Oshubo community of Oshun State in southwest Nigeria. <laughs> And that's where we draw the curtains on today's edition of Africans. For coverage of African arts and cultural programs, do contact the producer on Africans at tvcnews.tv. You can also follow us on Twitter at TVC Africans. Till we come your way again next time, it's goodbye. What are the people saying? The first local government out of the Tanzanian local government is more than many states in the north. The economy is booming. Where is the economy booming? Bomb blast in Abuja. Don't you have security? Why are we fighting? Presidency should not just sit in Abuja or in Asokoro or wherever it is. The are supposed to be local around. They know them. Men cannot be there and be there at the same time. The life of the citizens, community need to be protected. It's going to work out. Bring the message of peace. Let there be proper devolution of power from the center. The center is too powerful. The people, only on Core TV News. Open your arms, your fists disappear. Hello and welcome to your program, The People. The program that identifies with the people every day on the street where we discuss political issues. And today we're in the beautiful city of Ilefe, one of the ancient cities in Nigeria. And you know, today we're looking at what is happening in our country. First, we're referring to the recent bomb blast in Abuja with regards to what the president said during the May Day celebration before the bomb blast. First, he said that the, the government is looking into what they can do to solve the insurgency. Right after that, we talk about what he also said in the speech that the problem with this country is not poverty. This issue of uh, Boko Haram issue is going out of hand and it might lead to civil war if it is not taken. We have many Nigerians reacting negatively into these things, but I think it is better for the government to take a decisive action. Now, we have been made to believe that right in this Nigeria uh, geographical set, that uh, there is a particular place, a dark spot, which Nigerian army cannot actually enter into. And that is where these Boko Haram sects are residing. I mean, it's quite shameful. It's quite shameful. If the, Supreme, I mean, if, if the military headquarters can shift their base, it's not too much for them to shift their base and relocate to Borno or Adamawa, where these people are actually becoming something else. Must we wait until this present PDP administration drift us into Nigeria, another, another civil war or civil strife. No, 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 no. I don't think Nigeria deserves that. And uh, this call for also a common concern. Even among the so-called countries that are in our neighborhood, 
our neighboring uh, country, countries that we maintain borders with. I mean, Nigeria is not too big. It's not, it's not as big as India. It's not as big as US. Then what are we really talking about? South Korea, North Korea recently, that um, a boat capsized and um, a lot of children, they died. The man said that he was unhappy and um, he wasn't able to sleep because every night he sleeps, he hears them, the noises and them, the cries of the children that died in the sea. So that made him resign the next day. I can see this, um, I see this act of, of what this man did as an act of sincerity, I, um, an act of humanity. He did this because he felt the pain that people are feeling in this country. But that cannot be said of um, President Gulag Jonathan. This, this, it is a man that, after that uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, bomb blast that happened, the first one that happened, an hour after that incident, he went to Bauchi State for a campaign. What kind of president does that? That doesn't make sense. He should make a plan. I know, that man, I know, he knows everybody that's doing that, funding and them, everybody that is doing that, that, that shit that's happening in Nigeria. He knows them. But I think it's under their power. They've suppressed his capabilities that he can't even do anything. So I think what can be done in this kind of situation is for um, a group of notable men in this country to come up and stop this menace. Maybe they should impeach him because I can't see the reason why this man is still running his administration, why he can't do anything. Even see um, um, people and soldiers in the United States are offering, they are offering their help and aid to support Nigeria. A lot of um, news, I mean, kind, um, so many stuff about Bokram and what they've been doing. What we have in Nigeria presently is pathetic and I it's a very serious thing that government should do something about it <clears throat> because uh, what is happening now i don't think uh, our president and the, the other people in government are proactive enough they're supposed to wage war against this Boko Haram and solve the the, the the security issue at, at once but it's like they are not doing anything on it they just leave people people innocent people are just dying lives are lost and they shouldn't be at all they are there in government. They have to do something because there should be a social order in um, in Nigeria, and everything has to be has to be orderly. But now, presently, they are not doing anything. They are just after their money. They are just after what they want to get. That's what they are doing. And they, uh, I don't know. I don't know how, how, how these people got there. They 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 receive our mandate, but they are not giving us back what they are supposed to do for us. So people are dying over there. They, they don't do anything about it, and it's very serious, it's pathetic. It's an insulation that we're from, it's insulation that all these things are happening because, because of him. If they say all these things are happening because of you, why don't you leave the place and save the people from dying? Look at the, look at the 230 guests that are in Sambisa. Eh? Today is the same thing day that those guests are being in captivity. You don't know what to do, you don't know how to free them. And you, and you are saying your government is going to continue. That, that is one problem with Africa. There's no democracy in Africa. They will never step down. Even if 10 million people die, they will still, and, and it remains just uh, 1,000 people. They want to be the president of that 1,000 people. No mind the 10 million that have died. I think that sooner than later, the problem will be a thing of the past. And that this country will go back to our peaceful era. We are in, you can conduct your business without any molestation, without any fear without any embarrassment from anybody, without fear of being attacked by terrorists or without fear of being hit by a bomb, wherever you are going to. So I'm praying to God that the God will give the president the wisdom to do what is right. President Gulag Jonathan should just resign because I don't know what the man is doing. I don't know what he's doing right now. And um, I heard yesterday too that uh, another bomb blast happened in my degree. And now gunshots. So if this keeps happening, I don't know what this country is going to end up into. People should just stand up. We should fight for our own rights. We know what we can do. The soldiers, the police force, everybody should come together and fight. And we should just come together and stop these people. They are, they are no more than us. We are capable. We are more than them. We can stop them. We have the strength, we have the power, we have the capability to stop them. So all I can just say is that we should just come together as one 
and I fight these people once and for all. He should resign. He should resign and let somebody else come in. I want the government to be proactive enough. They should do something better on the security of Nigeria. They are supposed to, or I, uh, I don't know, maybe they, they, they should install uh, uh, CCTV camera everywhere. They have to be vigilant so that all this terrorism will, will, should stop in Nigeria now. Desire time, the government decide as to what is going to happen. And this also gives me an insight to the fact that let us make some pre-qualification for any president to be elected. All their children must be here in Nigeria. They must have their education here in Nigeria. Because I can imagine if all those ladies that we are talking about, all those boys that have been slaughtered, that have been killed, if they were to be a part of the children of the president, certainly the president would not be dancing around, going to uh, Kano to go and uh, launch a presidential campaign, or coming to uh, any other place to go and celebrate when there is bombing. I mean, when the house is not in order, then what are you talking about? No, 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 no. Something urgent has to be done. The president is trying, and we all we need to do as a citizen of this country is to continue to pray for him so that this country will be a better place for all of us. And the action of the terrorism should be condemned by all and sundry all over the country. Nowhere in the world that they are not experiencing one incident of terrorism or the other. But we are praying to God that the Lord of peace will bring back peace into the world. The problem of Nigeria is not uh, uh, poverty. He is talking about himself and those in his cabinet. He is talking about himself and those in cabinet. Hey, but if he says he's talking about the generality of Nigeria, yes. I would say the Nigerian populace is poverty ready. They are poverty ready. People are dying carelessly because of food. A lot of people are dying in their, in their house because they can't afford the money to go to the hospital. And he stayed there in Abuja. You know, you, you know the, the kind of comfort that is in Nazarok. That is what is, what is making him to talk like that. That there's no poverty in Nigeria. Because he, he has everything at his own beck and call. The same thing is his senator, his house of rep, and his uh, 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 federal cabinet. They are in money. Poverty is part, of, is part of the problem in Nigeria. Because if you look at it, like what I said earlier, that the economic status is bad. Even um, people that import goods, like the laces that sells, market is no more moving as before. And at the same time, you can, I can't go to the market to say that I want to buy something when I don't have the, enough capital for it. Poverty level in Nigeria is really, really high. And then this thing is really affecting the way we think. So far, if, uh, for example now, if one is unable to have three square meal, automatically the way he's going to be thinking is good, we've got different or all from those that, that have their three families all, all the time. So in that case, I think poverty contributes to insecurity. Government should go back to the drawing board to really study what the problem in Nigeria is and then to really know how it can be tackled and then how it can be resolved. But if I had eaten the love rice or inya this morning and you have never taken gari, we will not be talking the same way. I'll be talking to somebody who has, who has Belefu. You'll be talking like a, like, like a hungry man. It's been a very wonderful day right here in the city of Lady Fair, I must confess, but hope to see you in your own city next time. Tomorrow, God willing, we'll be here to do more. My name is God Willie Rumble. Bye for now. The People, only on Core TV News.
memorable experience. I've met a lot of amazing people. I had a very beautiful time and I was definitely going to be So the perfect tour is rock. I'm done. Elizabeth and one king in Saudi, so there are the three control over the world. <laughs> and as you can see, this is a symbol of elephant. That is how the biggest of all among of all the kings. So that is the symbol. And as you can see, the sword, any king that is not in your balance, like Allah, they must come to Ife to come and take a sword in the shrine of Oromia. Because Oromia is the great warrior and is the grandfather of the
Put your hands up. Orishanla, lo mule wa ye o, ile bo bo, ile orisha o. Meanwhile, the army has continued its clearance operations of Boko Haram remnants in Bornu State, also in the northeast. The acting director, Army Public Relations, Colonel Sonny Usman, says troops of the 7th Division in Operation Lafia Dole have made tremendous progress in their operational responsibilities. He says their efforts resulted in the killing and arrest of suspected terrorists, rescue of kidnapped persons, mostly women and children, and recovery of arms and ammunition. According to the Army spokesman, a similar feat was achieved by troops of the 21 and 22 Brigade and many others deployed in various locations across the state. Some of the rescued women told the troops that their husbands were Boko Haram terrorists who are on the run towards the Lake Chad area. According to the Army, troops in various deployments within the theater of war remains vigilant and committed to their duties of clearing the remnants of Boko Haram hiding in various remote areas. In other news, as Nigerians continue to lament the high cost of fuel at most filling stations, the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps in Oshun State have decided to step in on the situation. The mandate given to the core members is to monitor activities at the stations to ensure they sell at the official price of 86 naira per litre. Weeks after the promise by the federal government that there will be better supply of PMS across the country, this long queue is still very visible at most filling stations 
who sell the products at the control price of 86 naira 50 kobo in Oshun State. At NNPC along Ring Road, cars and motorcycles are parked at the entry and exit point in a rowdy manner. The aim of the motorist is to get the products by all means. Even generator owners are not left out of the struggle. You know, like yesterday, I don't do for the police station where they say, now nah, I am my mouth to sleep yesterday. This morning time, as I see, come, come carry my mouth to come keep for the friend. We pray on the federal government to release more of the tanks they have promised so that the, everything will be eased with the society. I have been in this place for good two days now. I've been here since 5 o'clock this morning because I can get the fuel by this time of the day. Look at my pipe, they have already brushed it at that or something. I waited there for more than uh, 12 and a half hours. Men of the Nigeria Civil Defense Corps, led by the state commandant, had to be called in to restore peace. The place was jam packed and um, my officers couldn't uh, contain the, the crowd. The crowd was just too much for them, so I had to mobilize again and ensure that, personally, I'm on ground to ensure that um, my presence would at least give some respect to any other security agencies. The state commandant promises to collaborate with other security agents to restore order and sanity to the petrol stations. To me, security agents too are part, they are Nigerians too. Some of them too are eager to get these products at the price that I'm talking at the prevailing price at the mega station. So that's why you see some of them too trying to force themselves into the filling stations to buy fuel. We cannot rule that out. But there must be decorum and decency in the way uh, security agents should behave. In the meantime, Nigerians still urge the federal government to intensify efforts and ensure that PMS supply flows across all states as promised. This was a look of Ojuri, a very popular slum in Oshobo before Ojuri Nairobi's administration intervention. Now, check out the new look of Ojuri. Rename Nelson Mandela's Freedom Park. southwestern Nigeria. Its capital is Oshobo. It is home to several of Nigeria's most famous landmarks, including the campus of Obafemi Awolowo University, Nigeria's preeminent institution of higher learning. The major ethnic group in the state is Yoruba. The modern Oshun state was created in 1991 from part of the old Oyo state. The state's name is derived from the river Oshun, the venerated natural spring that is the manifestation of the Yoruba goddess of the same name. The state has a rich cultural heritage with some world-renowned tourist attractions. So we began the quest of unearthing the misery behind some of these antiquities and our first stop was at the site of the Oramayo staff in Ileife. Oromiyo was the sixth king, the only of Ife. And according to Ife oral tradition, Oromiyo was one of the grandsons of Odudua. 
he was also a warrior fighting wars of expansion. He wasn't just a warrior though, but a giant one, as revealed by his tall giant staff, which he used in his day-to-day -day activities. Chief Olaulu Omiwenu Oteyele is the Owa Eredumi of Ife in charge of the staff. He explained to Ross how the staff ended up there and its significance in the installation rite of the Oni of Ife as well as the Alafi of Oyo. The staff is 5.5 cm in height and about 4 feet square in width at the base. So, from the site of Oromiya staff, we headed straight down to Odudua's home. Many denote Odudua to mean the essence of behavior or the reservoir of culture and manners. Oral history of the Oyo Yoruba recounts the coming of the king Odudua from the east. When Odudua arrived in ancient Ife, he and his group are believed to have conquered the component communities and to have evolved the palace structure with its effective centralized power and dynasty. He is commonly referred to as the first Oni of Ife and father of the Yoruba people. On getting there, coincidentally, we met a gathering of elder statemen, each saddled with the responsibility of a particular deity in Ileife. King Olajide Farotimi Faloba is in charge of the Odudua's home. He says Odudua is the source of human existence. <laughs> So Ever the controversy surrounding the myth of Odudua, the Yorubas will feel they owe much of their existence to him. Then, from the cradle of early human existence, we journeyed again down to Enridesha in Osho State, host community of the Olumiri Waterfalls. For years now, the waterfalls has become one of the major tourist centers in Nigeria. It was first discovered by some hunters in the year 1140 after the death of Jesus Christ. The hunters had traveled 17 days from Ileife, led by Yeye Aye Akinla, one of Odudua's daughters. This is the Enrijesha waterfall here in Oshun State, southwest Nigeria. It's the river discovered so many, many years ago by some hunters who traveled for 17 days from Ilefe down here. And ever since, it has become a monumental historical attraction site of some sort in the country where many would travel from far and wide, even outside Nigeria, to just come and have a feel of the river. So we proceeded to the office of the chairman of Ocean Tourism Board, engineer Abimbola Daniel, who tells us there are even more, like the Ayikonuba waterfall, which he describes as a complete opposite of the Olumiri waterfalls. Ocean has several other waterfalls. Another one which is the opposite of the Olumiri waterfalls. You know, you keep rising to meet the waterfall at Olumiri, which is at Eni Jesha. 
Nuriade local government. The one at Okeilaorogun, the Ayikunugba waterfalls, you will descend into the valley and suddenly you find yourself totally cut off and surrounded by hills and you find the water gushing. It's so cold, you will be wondering, are you still in Nigeria? The reality is that that is one of the wonders of, of God which we enjoy in Oshun. With the hectic climb up the hill, many never get to the seventh level, with most stopping at the second. With this in mind, the Oshun state government is already planning massively to ease the pain of exasperating climbing. People come from as far away as Delta State, Lagos State, Kwara, Undo, Ikiti, Oyo, Ogun, everywhere. They do, people come because it's unique. And so we are working to add facilities to make people really comfortable there. Facilities that they can enjoy, better eating uh, places, better relaxation spots, more interaction with the water by putting around the gazebos, water slides into which, wading pools into which people can play safely. Coming up here the hill is to say the least a great trek. But just the comfort you get up this hill would compensate for any kind of discomfort or pain you may go through climbing the hill. Just as you can see many of the people in the river have actually forgotten the pain they went through climbing this hill. Aronson David is a revenue collector here. He explains the significance of this unique discovery and its healing powers. Good. Some people has been coming. That is uh, about three of them from Badagri side. They came. They even g give some, uh, some people that they, they thank God that they th that was a man. Even here, he said that there was a time they came here, the, the woman, as she's had a problem. Or you see the water now, the problem was off. It's a I myself, since I come here now, at least in a day, I used to bath the, with the water with three times a day. That I never fall sick since. Almost two years ago, I've been here now. I thank God for that. People would travel far and wide to have their bath in this river. And despite the claims of its healing powers, most of the people here say they are not aware of any, but will not deny the river's overall effect. I hate so, but I've not actually experienced such things for real. But the water is so cold and so natural, and the environment is so cool. It's just a place to be. Oh, my love is baffling. Um, I love this place. It's really interesting. It's fun to be here and um, the water is so cool and it's a very good way of relaxing. After having a bath in the river myself for several minutes, it must be said that it was highly refreshing. But I never experienced any kind of healing even though I didn't go there with any ailments. From here, our journey took us down to Oshobo, the state capital, which happens to be our last place of visit in this our seemingly never-ending search of historic monumental sites in Oshun State. The Oshun Shobu Sacred Grove is among the last of the sacred forest which usually adjoin the edges of most Yoruba cities before extensive urbanization. We are here now at the Oshun Oshobo Grove. It's a sacred forest along the banks of the Oshun River just outside the city of Oshobo, southwest Nigeria. And here, no residential building is allowed, no killing of any kind of animal is allowed, no fishing, no hunting or felling of the tree. And don't forget, this is where Oshobo started from. In recognition of its global significance and cultural value, the sacred grove was inscribed as a United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2005. To see monkeys jump up and down the street here is not an uncommon occurrence, especially if you have what they want with you. Bananas.
Adedoye Talabi Fani is the adopted daughter of late Susan Venga, an Austrian artist who resided in Nigeria until death and whose main focus was the Yoruba culture and the preservation of the forest. Talabi tells us how the name Oshobo came about and what the group stands for. Oshun is the deity in charge of fertility as well as waters of life and the first ancestors of Oshobo they came in search of water one of them was hunting but he discovered the abundant water there and he went back to Igbo Igbo the name the name of the hunter was Oguntimai but out of scarcity of water, they left Igbo Pole to come to Oshun Groves and they started living there. But one day, one of them was cutting trees and one of the trees fell into the river and the voice came out, Oh, so Igbo, Bogbo, Kokwaro, Meleti, Fota, meaning that you, the wizards of the forest, you've broken all my dying pots. And Oshun ordered them to leave the sacred place and to go to um, another place. She gave them the amount of uh, feet in measurement that where they should stay. And they stayed that as the second place. But when they were expanding, Oshun ordered them again to come to the main town where we have the palace shrine today. And when they settled down, they decided to have the name for the community. And they said from the voice they heard from the river Osoibo, that is where Oshobo is when they arrived. The Oshun Grove is actually a world UNESCO World Heritage Center. And it's because of the history, because of the culture, and because of the improvements done there. Inside the groove, you find the first palace, you find also the second palace of the Otaoja. And when you are guided, taking on a guided tour of the place, you get to know more. But we are preparing a simple brochure that tells people about the groove. This is the Ocean River right under the suspended bridge or what I call the bouncing bridge really and people will travel far and wide from all over the world just to come and have a take of this water and most of them will even have their bath in it because they believe it has some healing powers but whatever their faith is we've experienced varying degrees of testimonies about the efficacy of this water and many of these ocean devotees would never forget the impact of late Madame Susan Wenger, who really devoted her life to this sacred place. This line structure represents the work with Susan Wenger, nutrition of. For Gonja, Ola Abayomi is a chief guide at the group. He took us on a tour of the sacred forest, explaining some of the iconic works of art. I'm standing now on a suspended bridge right at the heart of the forest and just above the Ocean River. Built some 72 years ago, this bridge is meant to commune people from one point to another in the forest. And the reason why there are no pillars underneath is because the Ocean Goddess forbids it. And this, just like many other architectural designs in this forest, owe much to the genius of late Madame Susan Wenger, who devoted some 50 years of her life to preserving this forest. This is Ela, a rare god which lives in the air, serving as an intermediary between God in heaven and human on earth. And here is Ayedakum building where Susan Wenger lived in the groove. We went round the building and straight up where she slept while alive. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah.
Every year, the Oshimoshubu festival is celebrated in the month of August at the Grove. Yearly, the festival attracts thousands of Oshun worshippers, spectators and tourists from all walks of life. For the people of Oshubu land, August is a month of celebration and cultural reunion of the people with their ancestors and founders of the Oshubu kingdom. The festival is a two-week-long program. It starts with the traditional cleansing of the town, which is followed in three days by the lighting of the over 500-year-old 16-point lamp called Ino Olojumeri Dilogun, and the rites continue in that manner till the end. And this is it, a demonstrative masterpiece. And wherever our quest takes us next, this place will no doubt stand out as a true wonder of the world. From one of UNESCO's World Heritage Sites here in Oshinoshogo Sacred Grove in southwest Nigeria. <laughs>
This is a party that cares for the people. And we want you on the 14th of February to vote for Kowa Party. What is the logo? What is the logo of Kowa Party? Telephone! What is the logo of Kowa Party? Handset! I want you to be on the handset, yo! I want handset in the car before two. This is the party for your future that guarantees your well-being. This is the party that is established for your welfare. So we are calling on all of you to vote Kowa Party on the 14th of February. And it shall be well with you. It shall be well with Nigeria in the name of God. In the name of Jesus. It shall be well with all of us. The Lewara community is a small community in Nigeria's southern Oshun state. It's a community of not more than 500 people. However, life in this community was extremely challenging for most of the community members before the intervention of the Millennium Development Goals. They are benefiting from the overview of public expenditure initiative of the Federal Government of Nigeria adopted after Nigeria received the debt relief gains from the Paris Club and creditors. Nigeria's federal government provided 100 billion naira in its 2006 budget, some ministries, departments and agencies for intervention in designated debt relief gains funded Millennium Development Goals projects. These projects were designed in conjunction with the existing sector strategies of the government to take place within the institutional framework of public expenditure systems and be implemented by relevant MDAs. Through this came about the M&E mechanism adopted to monitor and evaluate public expenditure and the Millennium Development Goals. The MDG's projects supervised by the M&E team are planned and executed in a transparent manner that can easily be tracked and appraised by Nigerians and the international community. To ensure that um, the various resources approved for various um, projects and programs under the MG MDGs are channeled appropriately to the projects for which they were approved. And also is to ensure that the various government ministries, departments and agencies followed the implementation plan that was approved for them. With this, members of Elewara can testify to what has been produced from the hard work of the M&E initiative whose main objective is to provide dependable expenditure tracking and impact assessment in the short term. First is um, for us to demonstrate to Nigerians mm -hmm as well as members of the international community that uh, the debt relief gains is actually working in uh, Nigeria. Then uh, apart from that, we also evaluate the impact of the projects and programs that are being implemented. A visit to this community revealed wonders. It was here we met Mr. Moses, the man in charge of the piggery farm in the community. The 59-year-old pig farmer has since the start of this initiative noticed great changes in his life and that of his family and friends. Since they helped us, things have been going well. Now I can feed my family. Not only are the people of Elewara enjoying the tasty dishes prepared from the meat of these pigs, but they are also benefiting from the sale of these pigs. A well-grown pig could sell for over 300 US dollars, depending on the health and size of the animal. Youths and parents who had no jobs in the past are now employed in this piggery, which helps make ends meet. This um, program changed the life of members of community for those people who don't have any work to do. So it helped them to get something to do and to get money to send their children to school and to feed themselves. Before this initiative, uh, things were difficult. But with the intervention of MDG, we were able to at least uh, develop the site. So it's a welcome development.
Following its endorsement of the Millennium Declaration, Nigeria has clearly demonstrated its commitment to the realization of the MDGs by 2015. <laughs>